Hey, Way fam, thanks for tuning in. We pray that today's message impacts your life. Let's get ready for this service. Well, today what I want to talk about, let's deal with the real fear. And when we're talking about that is right now, we're realizing this, our lives are valuable. Our lives are so valuable that we're willing to sacrifice the economy, right. entertainment, right. freedom, whatever it takes to make sure that we're keeping safe. I thank God that our lives are valuable to God. Right. It's also valuable to society. We're doing everything we can to keep the coronavirus from spreading. You know what that means? You matter. You matter to the economy, to God. You matter even to the government. You matter to society. There's no one here that doesn't matter. That's right. And we know what something's worth by what we're willing to sacrifice for it. And right now, even as a nation, we're willing to sacrifice everything to just make sure people are safe. Now, right. also what I've learned through this time that we're going through this coronavirus um, trial and tribulation, this is what I've learned. I've learned this, that it's exposing some of our fears. What are some of our fears? Right now, we're fearful of being hungry. We're fearful of not having enough. We're fearful that, right. that maybe we'll, we'll run out of money. We're fearful about getting sick. We're fearful about dying. These are real fears that we're dealing with today. You know, my, my wife went today to get some food at, at, at Ralph's, and this is what happened to her. She got two cartons of eggs. That's what we usually get because we got a family of 10. And, and they told her, oh, just one carton. That's all you can get. And you start wondering, why only one carton? Because, because we're scared. Everybody's trying to get as many cartons as they can. They're scared that they're not going to have enough. My wife just put the carton back. But the reality is, this is the reality, that the majority of us, I want you to get this, will not get coronavirus. We're not going to die. That's the truth. That's the truth. The truth is, that our food line in America is strong. You know what that means? No one's really going to go hungry. Right. You're not really going to die. So I'm not saying that we shouldn't be cautious. We should. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be concerned. Of course we should. But there are greater things to fear than the coronavirus. And tonight I want to talk about some real fears that, that I want you to get that are eminent, that going to happen for sure, and we need to get prepared for it. So I can ask you a question. Is there, yeah. as you're talking there, something's kind of sparked in me. Is there something, is there an unhealthy fear at, versus a healthy fear? Yeah, there, yeah. That's a good question. Um, as he asked that question, there, every emotion that God gives us is good. It can be good if it's healthy, or it could be dysfunctional. The Bible says be angry and sin not. Do not give place to the devil. And, and how do you like sin with anger? That means you get angry and you hold on to it. Now it's unhealthy. There are things to get angry about and fight for. and We fight for justice. Very good. But holding on to a grudge is unhealthy. Now, fear is the same exact thing. The reality is there's healthy fears. I'm going to give you an example of a healthy fear. Um, Robert, let's say when I, when I was going to Cal State San Bernardino, you know what used to make, give me fear? It's tests. Yeah. Whether I'm going to be ready or not. So a test would bring fear to me. Now, is that a healthy fear? It's a healthy fear if it causes me to take the right action. How do I do with that fear? Prepare. Study. So that means I take the fear right out of it by doing the proper action. Now, unhealthy fear is what we're doing, what a lot of people are doing, right. is this panic. Yeah, yeah. That means we're concerned, we're scared about things that we have no control over. And you know what's causing us to do? Is take the wrong action. So wow. we're panicking. I gotta buy all the milk. I gotta buy all, I gotta buy all the toilet paper and we're hoarding and we're not even thinking about others. We're not thinking about a senior citizen that's, that has a, having a hard time to get to the store and making right. sure she has something left. Right. So unhealthy fear causes us to do this. Take unhealthy action, wrong actions, or it causes us not to take action at all in areas we should take action. Man, that is great. You know, as Pastor Mark was talking as well, on your phone, on your app, you can get the notes. I would, I would advise you get the notes and even fill in the blanks there so you can get everything that Pastor Mark was talking about tonight. You're not going to get in this, I think, 30, 40 minutes here. If you want the full, fullness of it, make sure to go to the app and download the notes. Well, let's talk about fear. Are there some things that we should fear? Yeah. 
there's some things that we really should fear and it's healthy and it's healthy to fear. One of, one of the things the Bible recommends that we should fear is check this out is fear God. We should fear God. And the Bible says in Proverbs 1, 7, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. It goes on to say fools despise wisdom and instruction. So it says the beginning of wisdom. What's wisdom? Why, do, why, is, why is fear in God come with wisdom? Because wisdom means this, is the ability to determine what the right choice is and having the discipline to do them. You know what good choices lead to? They lead to a successful life. Right. We need to right. fear making bad decisions. I'll tell you this. Our greatest enemy is not the devil. Our greatest enemy is the bad choices we make. <laughs> So he said, well, how do I get to start making great choices, have the right values? Is this fear of God. And the scripture says there's wise people that fear God. And then there's those that don't fear God. And the Bible puts them as fools. And this is how we know they're fools. They despise instruction. Don't tell me what to do. Don't preach to me. But you know, when we have that kind of attitude, you know what we do? We ruin our lives. I remember, you know, as, as we grow up, and this statement is not said as much as it used right, to be said, but this was a statement that used so to be true. said. I, I'm a man that I have, have the fear of God. Uh, yeah. I'm a God-fearing man. Yeah, yeah. And all that meant was this, that I honor God, I respect God, I value his, his, I value his, his word, and I obey it. I'm a God-fearing man. I don't hear that anymore. Thank I hear God. this. I'm a self-made man, <laughs> but we're forgetting totally exactly about right. God and a godless society will not succeed. Beginning of all wisdom is acknowledging God, you know, but also as we're talking about fearing God, there's a scripture that we don't share nowadays right. too much and I'm going to share it. And it's, it's in my, Matthew 10, 28. And this is what it says. Don't be afraid of people. Don't be afraid of people that can kill you. Now, that's a wow. trick. I mean, that's a trick to me yeah. because if anybody's trying to kill me, I'd probably yeah. be scared. Exactly. But this is what he's saying. Don't fear, be afraid of people that can kill you, but, but, they can, but they cannot harm your soul. So the Bible talks about the two parts of us. And that means our body and then our soul. So God said, don't fear people that can kill your body because they cannot destroy your soul. They cannot kill oh, your good. soul. But he goes on to say, instead... You wow. should fear God who can destroy both your body and your soul in hell. Whoa, what a scripture. Wow. And when I hear that scripture and, you know, we need to dust off these scriptures and start yeah, thinking about, yeah, I, I understand I fear the coronavirus, but could it be that we respect the coronavirus more than we respect God? Wow, great That we're point. more concerned that's about our point. bodies than we are our soul. Right, and that's right. what the Bible wow. says. What is the profit of man wow. to gain the whole world and then lose his soul? And the scripture says that God, we should fear God because God has the power to judge us and don't oh, you get this and send us and sentence us to eternal destruction or hell for wow. eternity. Great we need to think about that. Wow. And as you're talking about fearing God, um, what does it mean to fear God? What does yeah. that mean to fear God? Well, to fear God is, is very simple. It's, a, it's an attitude of deep respect. It means reverence and awe. It means to have a high esteem for the worth and excellence and ability of God. What you're saying is, I value God. I respect God. I reverence him. Wow. That means it's just having a high value, high thought about God. See, I have five girls in my house. Um, I have five daughters and, and my daughters overall, they respect me and they reverence me. And how do I know that when I talk to them, they listen, they value my opinions. They ask me for advice. They, 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 they esteem me as a person. It's the same thing with God. If we value him, if we fear him, we're in awe, we respect and we reverence him. And we show that by our lifestyle, by our thinking, by representing him. Well, that's great. Now, see that the notes here, the fear of the Lord will also keep us from sinning. Yeah, Can yeah. you expound on that? What does that mean? Yeah. You know, it's a, you know we've, we've got almost, a, we've gone to the place that we've lost our, 
our respect for God to the point that I'll live however I want right, to live. Right. And God, I guess you're just going to have to ex- ex- accept it. Tough luck if you don't like it. <laughs> but, but the scripture in Exodus 20, 20 says this. Don't be afraid, Moses answered them, for God has come in this way to test you. Wow. And so that your fear of him will keep you from sinning. Wow. That's, you know what? Respect for God will stop us from sinning. Uh, again, I'll give an example of my daughters. I can't be with my daughters all the time. I mean, they're, they're in places that, they're all over San Bernardino and San Bernardino County. But what right. keeps them in line? Their respect for God and their respect for their daddy and their mama. Wow. They do not want to let me down. Right. Fear of God will cause us to stop sinning. Wow, what a great response. You know, God is speaking right now. And as I'm looking at some of these notes here, we're talking about sin we fear God because he has the power. I think you mentioned it earlier because he could judge us. Yeah. And he's going to judge us. Everybody. And he could sentence us. Right. Can you expound it? What does that mean? He's going to judge us and he's going to, he could sentence us. What yeah. does that mean? Well, see, Jesus, God, Jesus Christ is a savior, definitely. And, and we know Jesus, Jesus is my savior. Very good. But he's also a judge. And we're choosing in this life right now whether we're going to accept him as our savior wow, or good. if we don't, one day, then he'll be our judge. That's good. And there's only two options. And that's why we should really think about uh, this stuff. Yeah. And in respect to the coronavirus, I understand that's a serious no, thing. But this is way more serious yes, because Jesus came back today. Right. All that would matter is whether we're saved or not. That's exactly. Or it was the last day so on earth. So as Christians, should we be preaching this? Should we, should we be sharing with others? What God is doing or what God can do or the, the result of sin should we be sharing with others? Well, I, I think what's now happening in the church overall, we're shying away from scriptures like this. And right. it's, you know, right now, if they, have a, they come up with a cure within 24 hours of the coronavirus, you know what would happen? We would be super excited. I'll tell you right. why. Because we know the dangers of it. Right. We know right. how, how it's affecting our economy. It's affecting our paychecks. It's affecting our homes. It's affecting our freedom. And if someone came with a cure, there would be good oh, news yeah, all over the sure. place. All over but news. it wouldn't be that great news if we didn't know the dangers of coronavirus. Wow. Now, good. the good news about Jesus Christ is really amazing when you know if we don't receive Jesus, he's the cure. What would happen? That means we would be doomed to eternal destruction in a hell separated from God forever. And this is what we need to do. We need to make sure we're bringing out these scriptures because how can people turn away from God and say, Jesus, save me, if they don't even know they need to be saved? Wow, what a great So we have to say it. So we got to fear God, number one. And it kind of brings us to point number two. The Bible teaches that Jesus Christ is coming back. Should we fear that? Right. There's a second thing we should fear. We should fear God, of course, but we should also fear not being ready for Jesus' return. Wow. Jesus Christ is coming back. There's a scripture I will read to you. It's in Matthew 24, verse 30, and we're going to go to verse 36, 40, 42, and through 44. And he goes, and then at last, the sign that the Son of Man is coming will appear in the heavens, and there will be a deep mourning among all the people of the whole earth. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels, look at this, with his mighty blast of a trumpet. And they will gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. It's going to be a world, it's going to worldwide news affect every single nation. This is describing Jesus coming back. However, look at this. No, verse 31. And he will send his angels. No, in verse 36. However, no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the son himself. Only the father knows. Two men will be working together in a field. One will be taken. The other one left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill. One will be taken. The other one left. We want to update this. Two people will be at the mall. Yeah, exactly. One will be taken, right. another one left. Well, the Two people will be in the living room watching a watch party. One will be taken, the other That's one right. left. Two people wow. will be at, at Walmart in the wow. line. One will be taken, wow. the other one left. Wow. This is a real day that's coming. And if we're not ready, we need to fear yeah. this day. In verse 42, it says, so you two must keep watching. Watch. See, be alert. 
for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Understand this. If a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. You also, check this out, must be ready all the time for the Son of Man will come when least expected. Wow. So we don't know when he's coming, but he's coming. And, and, and again, we need to dust off these scriptures. Right. When I grew up, there was always talk about the rapture. Right. And we talk about the rapture. What is that? That's the day that Jesus Christ is coming back and taking his church home. That's right. Yeah. And I remember at times I'd come home, Rob, yeah. and I'd freak out that was the same way. because I wasn't living right. No. And then I, I, I would just... I would go to the kitchen and mom wasn't there <laughs> and she had the stove on yeah. and I would just come in as a teenager and say, mama, hey, where mama, at? where are you? And yeah, if she didn't that. answer, I, I thought the rapture came yeah. and I thought I got left behind. You know why? There was an awareness that Jesus could come right. at any time. Right. And the reality is we're in the last days yes, we are. and Jesus could come at any time. Do you know wow. that the coronavirus is actually a sign of the last days yeah, that God will give us yeah. signs yeah. before he came. It's like, I'm going to warn you, warning, warning, I'm coming, wow. I'm coming, I'm coming. Look at the scripture, yes, Robert. Great. It's a really, really great scripture. Luke 21, 11. Look at this, what it says. There will be, be mighty and violent earthquakes. That's what's happening all over the world. And in various places, famines. That's what's mm. happening right now. Yeah, there, yeah. We're talking about millions of people are hungry right now right. in the world. Famines across the world. As a matter of fact, yeah. last week or this month, they had a, a, a horde of locusts oh, yeah. See, no, yeah. that are eating all the yeah, vegetation, know, which is causing another famine. That's right, last week. And day. it says this, and pestilences, mm. which means plagues, malignant and contagious wow. or infectious epidemic diseases, rat right now. which are deadly and devastating. And there were... And there, and there will be sights of terror and great sights from heaven. But look at that. Wow. That there would be pestilences yes, sir, exactly. and infectious epidemic diseases. That's exactly what's going now, on right now. If this is true, wow. and this is a sign of the last days, shouldn't we be fearful about it? Have real fear? Yeah, because Jesus is really coming back? That's a healthy fear. Yeah, Why does that say healthy fear? Because a healthy fear causes wow. you to take the right action. Yeah. Let me tell you, I was raised in church. We were raised in church with mama yeah. and dad. And um, growing up, I heard this over and over that Jesus is coming back. Yeah, yeah. Why hasn't he come? I remember 10 years ago, Jesus coming back. He come back any second. What is Jesus waiting for? I've been here all my life. When is he coming? Well, the, the Bible says that, the Bible says this, that he's coming back. But the reason he's, he's slow and he's taking, I'm taking my time right now. And 2 Peter 3, 9 says, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. Wow. So that's the reality. So say, well, why is he taking so long? This is why so many people aren't ready. Wow. So he wants to make sure that we're ready. Isn't right. that a good God? Yes, Making sure that we're ready. Right. Let's go to the um, cure because we have, we have yeah, two what minutes left. How did, what's the cure for these fears? Yeah. And when we're talking about a cure, that's, that's, that's really super important because these fears are real. Man, Jesus could Christ come, come back anytime. Right. I could die in any moment. Right. Am I ready to stand before God? If Jesus were to come back, would, would I be taken or would I be the one left? Wow. If I was standing before God, would he say to me, um, well done, good and faithful servant? Or would he say, wow. no, depart from me. I don't know you. Now, there's a cure to this. And God is, thank God, this is what we're here God, to do, yes. is talk about the cure. The good news of Jesus Christ. Yes. Again, if there was a cure today for coronavirus, okay. it'd be all over the news. news. There's a cure yes. for something that's greater than the coronavirus. Yes, it's our sin. It's the, I want you to get this, the, the, the condemnation and the wrath of God that's over every one of our lives and our sin. And you know what the cure is? Is the love of God. The love now, wow. We're in a place 2,000 years. Wow. You know what the message has been? God loves you. Yes. yes. God so loved, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten yes. son Thank that whosoever Lord. believes in him yes. will not perish or have ever, but have everlasting life. Yes. What does the scripture say? I love you and I love you so much. 
I'm yes. willing to sacrifice my son to forgive you yes. and give you eternal life. Yes. God loves uh -huh. you. And all we have to do is believe and receive the love of Jesus. Believe God loves us and receive the sacrifice for our sins, which is Jesus uh, Christ. That's awesome. And as you're talking as well, could it be where people right now, could they be majoring in the minors? Yeah. Major things that's not important? Is that what's going on too in the society right well, now? Well, I, I think right now there's things to fear, of course. But we have to be careful that we're not fearing coronavirus or fearing the loss of our job more than we're fearing the loss of our soul. Wow, that's good. Or the sickness of our soul. That's good. Because I, I want you to get this. Wow. Sin is serious and sin we, I said, wow. we need to fear sin, yes, too. Yes, we do. Yes, fear we the do. destructive power yes, of sin. Right. You know what the that's Bible right. says in Romans 6, 23? says, for the wage of sin is death. You know what yes. that means? Every time we sin, there's a consequence for it. And it always ends in death. Imagine, wow. Robert, if there was a disease that killed people every time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How would we run from oh, that? Oh, my gosh. We're, We're running from coronavirus, which we should. Yeah, of course, yeah. But, but wouldn't we run... Terrified. But 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 are we running from coronavirus right. and fearing that more than we're fearing the destruction power of wow, sin itself? Wow, so really, wow. I think that's a good question. Are we majoring in minor fears right, and, right. and forgetting wow. about the major things we that's really powerful. should fear and get ready that's for? That's powerful. So number one, cure, receive the love of God. Yes. What's number two cure for these fears? Is is get ready. Get ready. Get ready. And this is very simple. Everyone that believes and accepts Jesus Christ has eternal life and is ready. Yes. In John 5, 11, it says, or 12, let's just do 5, 12. It says, he who has a son by accepting him as Lord and Savior has life or has, or that is eternal. He who does not have the son of God by personal faith does not have eternal life. Wow. So God has made this very simple. He who has a son by accepting him as Lord has eternal life. He who does not have the son does not have eternal life. You know what's so great about this? Every single person here can be saved. Yes, There's a cure. Yes, yes. You don't have to fear. I'm not ready. You don't have to fear. Because by receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior yes. and putting your faith in him alone, yes, it's a, by faith alone, yes, you can be sure yes, of this. God. You're saved. And if you're saved, you don't have to worry about no, but, no, no um, judgment. You know what that means? Right. It's that you look forward to Jesus Christ coming back because you're not expecting punishment. You look forward to him coming back because he's going to save you from this wow, wretched world. This is good news. Right. Receive Jesus. Today's the day. There's a cure. That's awesome. And number three, yeah. cure for these fears. What's number three, Pastor? Well, there has to be a willingness to, and we. this is another one of those words we have to yeah. like dust off. Um, Jesus' first message, he said this, repent for the kingdom wow. of heaven is at hand. Yep. Wow. And one of, the, one of the things we need to do nowadays, this is what I've seen. Like there, There's a culture right. shift even in the church. People want to accept Jesus as Savior, right. but they don't want to like give up their sin. Wow. And so it doesn't work that way. Answer. That's what the Bible says. Many are going to say, right. Lord, Lord, right. Lord, Lord, I did this in your name. I did right. that in your name. He said, I really never knew you because you're a worker of iniquity. So there has to be a time in our lives that we're sick and tired of the sin that's destroying us wow. and causing wow. all these fears and shame within our lives. It's not a shame that we've messed up right. because we've all messed up. We've all gone astray, said things that we wish we never had said, done things we wish we'd right. never have done, joined the club. <laughs> Every one of us has sinned. That's Every right. one of us is guilty. But this is the most important thing. It's not a shame to have done all that stuff. It's wow. a shame to stay there. Wow. We don't need to stay there. So you know what that means? We can make a decision. I am done with that lifestyle. I'm wow. done with the compromising. I'm done with the lying. Jesus, save me. Wow. And in Acts 3, 19, it says, now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins be wiped wow. away. You know, what a great Loved scripture. It. I love that. So what happens after we repent? It's kind of answering that. What happens after we repent? Now, look, there's a wow. miracle. There's a miracle that wow. happens when you repent. And and I received that miracle in my personal life. Um, I came from a family where my, none of, I'm, I'm a, my last name is Garcia, and none of my family was saved. My dad's heritage was drinking, um, beating my mom up, um, just, he wasn't a father to me, he was never there for me. All he showed me was drinking, abuse, put guns in my mom's head. And, and I, I just realized I didn't want that life. Right, right, right. 
And, and at a young age, when I heard this good news, yes. that there was a cure yes. to my yes. life, yes. that I could be set free, that I could have a new life, I realized oh, I want that. Oh, and I said, and this is what I said, I don't want that. I want that. I, want, like, I don't want wow. the sin. I want God. Wow. I don't want the selfishness. I want God. It was a choice. Wow. But, but I want you to guess, if you make a decision today to repent of your sins, yes. you're going to have yes. to cure all those fears. Yes. Look what the Bible says wow. in Acts 2.38. Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the wow. Holy Spirit. Forgive so two miracles goodness. are going to happen. One, every single sin you've ever committed. Wow. Every Lord. wrong thing you've Thank ever done Lord, yes. will be absolutely washed away. Yes, you can literally have a brand new start today. Yes, and when God forgives, he forgets it is done. Yes. And the second miracle that happens, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Powerful. Thank What's the Holy Spirit? It's the Spirit of God. Yes, you know what we call someone that repents of their sins and forgiven? and receives the gift of the Holy Spirit, we call that a born-again experience. Wow. That means you become a brand new person. You are no longer the same. God's Spirit comes and lives inside of you and makes you literally a brand new person. Wow. And when we have the Holy Spirit, guess what? We have eternal life as well. Wow. We serve a good yes, God. He's made it so easy. Yes, Every God. one of those fears. Fear. Oh my gosh, I don't know where I spend eternity. Don't worry about that. God has that covered right. in Jesus Christ. Man, I've really messed up. God says, I got that covered in Jesus Christ. You can be forgiving your sins. I don't think I could do it. I got that covered too. I'm giving you my spirit and my ability to make you into a new person so you can wow. do it. Receive the new start that God's offering. That's we powerful. have a cure. That's powerful, Pastor Marco. Again, as we're talking, we got a limited amount of time here. And Download the notes. Hear this message again. We've talked about the real fears, fear in God. Fear in Jesus coming back. And even lastly, what you're saying now is now we need to repent to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. People that are watching right now, Pastor Mark, on a watch party, maybe they're at their job site, maybe they're listening on their phone somewhere. Pastor, can you lead someone, maybe that doesn't know Jesus, can you lead someone to Christ tonight? Yeah. We're going we're gonna to make this real simple today. I'm going to let you know God absolutely loves you. Yes. And all we have to do is receive the love of God. Jesus was, the Bible says, God did not send his son to earth to judge us, condemn us, to punish us, or sentence us. He sent his son to save us, to make us whole, to make us complete. He came to give us a life, a new life, a new beginning. Today, you could trade in your depression, your addiction, your fear, and you could get a new life of love, joy, peace. And eternal life. It's a quality of life that every single one of us are looking for. And you're one decision away. You can accept Jesus and his love and be born again and be saved. And don't ever fear Jesus coming back. You don't have to fear judgment because there's no judgment for those that are in Christ. There's no condemnation or judgment for those who have faith in Christ. Today is your day. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. So let's deal with the real fear the big fears. And we should fear these things because you know what it does? It's healthy. It causes us to repent of our sins and get right. So we're going to say a prayer. Very simple. In your living room, in your workplace, in your car, right now, say this prayer and receive forgiveness. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Receive freedom. Receive what you've been looking for, an abundant life. Bow your heads, close your eyes, right there in your living room. And just repeat after yes. me. Say this. Jesus, Jesus I, thank you I thank you for loving me so much, me so much that you gave your only son, you your only son as a sacrifice, a sacrifice for, my sin. for my sin. I realize, I realize I'm, a I'm a sinner. And I acknowledge you now, acknowledge you now as, my savior, as my Savior, as my hope. As my hope. Forgive me. Forgive me cleanse me. Cleanse I receive you, Jesus, and your Holy Spirit. Make me new. Make me new God. I am saved. I, am saved. I, receive, I receive the free gift, the free gift of eternal life. eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Wow. Hey, Way fam, thanks for tuning in. I pray that you receive the blessing from this message. And if you would like to support this ministry, click the link below. And until then, see you next time.